Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about regression and in particular I will show how to use TreeNet software to build a simple regression model and all of the key steps involved in doing that type of activity. And of course, just as a reminder, regression is a type of predictive modeling application where the target variable is continuous and we're interested in building a model that makes that continuous prediction. So let's see how this is done in TreeNet. So I moved uh, to Salford Predictive Modeler application, SPM 7.0. That's what I have on my screen. And I'm assuming that it's already been properly configured. Uh, in order to build a regression, I'll start with uh, opening a data set. So I clicked on Open Data File. Uh, here is the list of files available for modeling. And uh, at this point, I navigate into G Training Data Folder. Of course, on your uh, system, you may have a different location. Notice that the files of type are set as ASCII. But if you have a different type of uh, data sets, they're also available here. I will work with Boston Housing Dataset, and the main purpose of that uh, data set is try to predict house values in Boston area based on some demographic data back in 1970s. So I pick the data set, I click the Open button. It shows me that the data set has 506 observations, 14 variables. I skip all of the other interesting stuff here and go straight into modeling. So I click the Model button. The Model Setup window shows uh, the list of variables available, and notice I am going to build a regression model. Why? Because the target variable, if I sort variables in uh, file order, is the last one on my list. It's called MV, uh, median value on homes. That's the target. All of the remaining variables will be my predictors. Uh, and notice that the analysis method is set to TreeNet. That's one of the key engines available uh, within uh, SPM software. So I build a regression model. I have my target. I have my predictors. Uh, then the next important step is to set the testing strategy. And in this case, I'll use one of the simplest tests, which is 20% of data will be allocated randomly as a test sample, and everything else will be used for learning. Now, TreeNet is a non-parametric, non-linear modeling engine that works strictly from the data set, and you can configure some of the key parameters of TreeNet using TreeNet tab and TN Advanced tab. Again, we have a different set of videos to explain all of the different control parameters and uh, some of the basics of TreeNet machinery elsewhere. But to get you started, you can skip all of that and simply introduce uh, a few simple parameters on your own. For example, we will be building 200 trees. That's a good starting point. Each tree will have six nodes, and the learn rate will be set at 10%. Later on, you can experiment by changing those parameters and uh, playing around, see what kind of uh, differences it makes. And again, to keep things simple, I'm working with least squares regression. So I'm trying to optimize some of squared errors, and I'm trying to use TreeNet to do that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, all the remaining tabs can be explained later uh, in this follow-up videos. At this point, I'm ready to hit the Start button. So I press the Start. Uh, it builds the model in the background, and it comes back with the TreeNet output display that shows uh, model performance in terms of mean squared error on the graph below. Now notice, my models are indexed by the number of trees, and the two curves shown represent learned set performance and test set performance. And in this case, they closely follow each other, which is a good sign, and that's something you always want to look at. Now, based on the test mean squared error, the optimal model size has 173 trees, and uh, the mean squared error at a 7.8 which roughly approximates to 0.87 or 87.164% R-squared on the test partition. And again, the test partition was not used for model building per se. It was only used to monitor model performance. 
Now, having satisfied, yeah, being satisfied with this kind of performance measures, let me have a look at some summaries uh, with respect to the model of interest. For that, I click on the summary button. And here you have access to all sorts of different statistics, graphs, performance measures, summaries, etc., etc. Again, there is no need to go over those at greater length. Like we'll have different videos and we'll talk about gains, we'll talk about error statistics and so on. But for starters, you always want to look at the variable importance. In this table, you can see that all of the variables are ranked according to their contribution in the current regression model, uh, namely uh, number of rooms, uh, uh, percent low socioeconomic status in the neighborhood, distance uh, to employment centers, crime rate, pollution rate. Those are the key variables that were picked by TreeNet. Uh, you can also check uh, things like residual box plot that shows you the overall distribution of residuals once you take the model of interest and try to apply it to either learn or test data sets. So all looking fine now. So I'm going to close this window. And uh, in addition to being able to just see overall how the model performs and what enters into the model, you also have access to TreeNet plots. Now, I configured SPM such that plots are automatically generated at the end of each run. So by pressing on Display Plots button and then opening up one variable dependence plots, I can see how individual variables contribute into my overall model performance. For example, RM variable, when I double click on that, shows a stepwise uh, contribution curve. What it means is that as RM variable, which is, stands for the house size, varies between four and six, there is no significant impact into the predictive response. Likewise, as it goes above 7.5, there is no uh, significant impact. But in the middle, between 6 and 7.5, there is a progressively higher and higher contribution into the house value. Now, in some cases, you may want to simplify these plots, and that's why we have this additional machinery at the bottom that allows you to fit splines. For example, you can pick a few points here get select current and place a few knots uh, here and there to find adjustments. And this way you can see exactly how the curve that Trinet constructed can be approximated by either an equivalent card basic or SAS code uh, using spline-based transformations. So that's pretty much uh, a very simple uh, sequence of steps that uh, uh, analysts like me and uh, like everyone else in our company usually undertake. And as you may have noticed, uh, TreeNet uh, is fairly easy to use as long as you have your target variable, which in this case is continuous, uh, and a set of predictors and the data set organizes as a simple flat file. Uh, with very simple steps, you can build a nonlinear, data-driven, adaptive regression. And you can study it, check its performance, and also get a very good idea on what the model is trying to tell you, what variables it uses, and also how those variables enter and it can also be transformed in order to represent uh, a useful underlying signal. That's pretty much it, and uh, in the next uh, videos we will expand on what I've just showed.